Welcome to One Little Spice, the Disney food podcast that isn't afraid to send you into the taste lab. Welcome to episode 14, Let Them Eat a Moose Boosh. <laughs> I'm Julie. And I'm Amy. So this month we are talking about our favorite signature restaurants. Yes. We are going to start with Monsieur Paul's. Last month we did our favorite one credit meals. These are our favorite two credit meals. So signature meals cost two dining plan credits. So if you remember on our first episode of last month, we talk about how the dining plan works. These meals this month are going to equal two credits on the dining plan, which means they are a little bit more expensive. They are the signature dining meals. This week, we will be talking about Monsieur Paul's. Or Mr. Paul's, as Amy and I like to refer to him. So why we very frequently call it Mr. Paul's is... It's we, just easier to say. Well, it's easier Well, it's easier to text. But also, I guess MR period is also an abbreviation for Monsieur. Yes. But Mr. is just easier to say. Yeah. And it's more hilarious. Yeah, we started when we were texting back. I just got tired of trying to spell Monsieur properly. So I knew how to spell it properly. I just said, Mr. Pauls, and Julie laughs at me. I'm like, what? I'm tired of texting it. Truth. All right, so before we get into the meats and potatoes of Monsieur Pauls, <laughs> yo, it's time for Amy's Daily Dish. Amy, what's your dish? Let's dish. There's only one item on today's Daily Dish because it's chock full of chickeny goodness. Got chicken guy is opening in Disney Springs. It is a quick service fried chicken spot being opened by Guy Fieri. Diners can choose between fried or grilled hand pounded chicken tenders. You can choose between, or from I should say, you can choose from 20 different house made sauces. Each order allows you to choose two sauces, but there has to be, or when they open, which I believe is mid-August, there has to be some mechanism put in place for getting extra sauces. They probably just don't want people ordering all 20 sauces for their, like, four pieces of chicken oh, and I not paying extra. Oh, I just you could order all 20 without paying a bit extra, and oh. I just got so excited. But no, for, clearly I should yeah. read the whole sentence. Um, and the pro- reason for that is probably because everyone would do that. I know we would and probably will... Do you want to make that happen? Do you want to build a snowman? Check us out on Patreon. What's that address again, Julie? www.patreon.com slash one little spice. Diners also have the option of the Big Bite B-L-A-T, a chicken sandwich featuring crispy smoked bacon, lettuce, avocado, tomato, and a creamy buttermilk ranch sauce. I'm just saying, wouldn't that be like a blacked? Yeah. Or a clot? Yeah. Or, I don't know. Sounds delicious. It does sound super delicious, but a B-L-A-T sounds like it would be just bacon, lettuce, avocado, and tomato, which also sounds like a delicious sandwich. Forget the chicken. I don't want it. (laughs) Um, Guy has come up with a few great sides. Signature seasons fries. I hope they are delicious like Five Guys Cajun fries, because... Yum. And let's see if I can do that. Mac Daddy Mac and Cheese. <laughs> and loaded fries smothered in super melty cheese and other toppings like grilled chicken, bacon, and green onions. So I have to um, rogue report here in the middle of Amy talking about this because one of our listeners actually posted on the One Little Spice page and it says, top 10 Disney World snacks. Have you seen these? They're really funny. They count yep. back down from 10 and then number one is, yeah. So it goes... Ten, all, nine, snacks, eight, have, seven, there, six, place, five, and it's four, silly, three, to rank, two, them, one, Dole Dole Whips. whips. (laughs) I knew it was going to be Dole Whips. Wow, so that was awesome. So thank you, Andy, for sharing that one with us. It brightened my day. It did. He literally just shared it two minutes ago, too. (laughs) So they have a few salad options as well. (laughs) Sorry, back to Amy in the newsroom. (laughs) 
uh, chopped chicken Caesar salad, barbecue chopped chicken salad, and a Southwest sweet corn salad. That sounds amazing. It does. It's it doesn't have any actual like chicken mention, so this might be like the vegetarian option. But I love it. it. I want amazing. it. It's amazing. It features charred corn, slaw, roasted peppers, black beans, tomatoes, red onion, grilled scallions, grilled scallions. And, oh. and I wrote friend tortilla chips, fried tortilla strips, served strips. with a cumin. Lime mojo sauce mojo. and a ch- mo- did I say mojo? Mojo. <laughs> Amy, this is not the Powerpuff Girls. No mojo jojo. Cumin lime mojo sauce and a chipotle ranch sauce. Dessert options include a couple of sundaes. It says a few sundaes, Amy. Okay, a few sundaes. Actually, it is just a couple. <laughs> well, there's only two listed. I'm just saying, you wrote a few, you listed a couple. Triple double mint, which is what? hand spun mink. <laughs> <laughs> mink chocolate chip. <laughs> I, I was not. So if you were ever wondering what they do with the rest of the mink after no. they make the coat, Guy Fieri has turned it into an ice cream. Uh, hand spun mint chocolate soft serve with cookies and cream crumbles. Mint chocolate soft serve? I know, it sounds tasty. That sounds amazing. Chocolate mints, chocolate syrup, and topped with fresh whipped cream. And cinnamon apple vanilla soft serve with a crunchy cinnamon cereal and cinnamon apple cereal. And fresh whipped cream. What? So is it topped in Apple Jacks? Because that's, that's just all I'm picturing. I'm, I'm picturing a crunchy cinnamon cereal and cinnamon. Is it like I'm, cinnamon toast crunch? Yeah, that's, I'm picturing. Apple Jacks? Yeah, I'm picturing vanilla I ice cream. I approve of all of this. Topped in cinnamon toast crunch and Apple Jacks. Are there pictures of cream? This anywhere? There aren't yet. No, they just had Ugh. pictures of the chicken. Um, now, excuse Lame. me for a minute while I do a Guy Fieri impression with his quote. About Chicken Guy. Oh, I am so ready. I am so ready to go to Flavortown now. I am stoked to be building Chicken Guy with my friend, Robert Earl. It's all about the real deal, all-natural chicken, but let me tell you, our sauce game is on point. So, I have been to one Guy Fieri restaurant, sort of, before. Like an actual Guy Fieri restaurant, or a restaurant he features on Diner Strivens and Dives? Both, actually. I've, I've been to a pierogi restaurant in Fall River that was on a very early episode of Di- Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. And let me tell you, it was really good. There's a Belgium restaurant in Chicago that I want to go to, and Bev and Jess were driving through Chicago, and they said, where should I go? And I said, this Belgian restaurant! <laughs> and they didn't go. So when my boyfriend and I went on a carnival cruise a few years back, the ship we went on had the Guy's Burger Rest Joint. I think that's what they call it. Guy's Burger Joint. And it was burgers and fries, and they were all delicious. But they all had really weird names, and they used all these acronyms. Acronyms. Acronyms that don't exist in the real world outside of drivers, divins, and drives, and... What's his TV? He has a cooking show, too. Did I say drivers, divins, and drives? I was trying to think about, like, if I just heard that in my head that way, or if he actually said it out loud, but yeah, try that again. Okay. So he uses all these acronyms. 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 (laughs) He is historically incorrect. Incorrect. They're actually initialisms. Yes. Initial. I thought it was acronym. Acronyms. They're only acronyms if they spell a word, like scuba. That's true. So he uses all this initial business. Initialisms. (laughs) Initial. He uses. So he gives a lot of the food complicated names and uses a lot of initialisms. Of things that don't exist outside of... Like a B-L-A-T. Like a that B-L-A-T. has chicken on it, too. And S-M... Or is it? Um, S-M-C. Super Melty Cheese. Which is delicious. Super Melted Cheese is amazing. Don't get me wrong. But it's not a... What's T-L-C Abbreviation. For? Tender Loving Care. I, on his menu, Amy. Which menu? I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, it was some really fun stuff, and it was really delicious, but the that would be my only criticism of Guy's work, is he names things... In a, in a very Guy Fieri In a very Guy Fieri sort of way, which is fine, I guess, but it can be a little confusing if you're not sure what Guy Fieri means. That but, said... Again, there are lots of restaurants that don't really say what's yeah. in their meals. Anyway, so... That said... The guy who decided that Carnival Cruise should put a bacon weave patty on top of the burger patty and have that available to me from, like, 
10 in the morning to like 6 p.m. at night on a carnival cruise. I support that. It came to the, to the point where Michael and I would just share one every day because we were already eating otherwise on the ship. So we just split one of them. And he does have A1 at his burger place, so I'm happy. I love A1. Wait, what? Planet Hollywood Observatory launching Chicken Guy, new quick service restaurant. Oh, so it's not in the Planet Hollywood. It's, it's like part of it, not the Planet Hollywood. I was like, they just redid that and he did some work on the menu. I think they made like a burger and him and the Robert guy, I think, made a bur- burger and that sandwich Robert menu. guy. I'm sorry. My friend, Robert Earl. Our sauce game is on point. But yeah, so it sounds like it's going to be really tasty. And who doesn't love fried chicken? Anybody? No. Nope. Bueller? Bueller? No, nope, it looks like all of you who are not vegetarians like fried chicken. All right, so that is all that I have for my daily dish today because I had to prep myself for that Guy Fieri impression. <laughs> all right, so now we are going to get into the boof at pom. Meat and potatoes for all you English folk out there of the menu. I don't speak French, so that was my attempt. It wasn't too bad. Boof et pom. Boof au pom. Boof au pom. Boof au pom. Boof au pom. So what does Disney have to say about... So Monsieur Disney Paul. has some lovely things to say about Monsieur Paul's. They say, delight in the culture and flavors of France that renowned chef Paul Bocuse. Is that what we decided so. his name was? Yeah. Has shared with the world for decades. Formerly Bistro de Paris restaurant in Epcot, Monsieur Paul is recently refurbished and located just upstairs from Le Chefs de France, the other gourmet French restaurant. The other gourmet French restaurant in the French Pavilion. Here you'll discover a focused wine list, inventive twists on traditional French dinner, and breathtaking views of World Showcase. This is the perfect place to celebrate a special occasion or simply savor delectable cuisine in a serene setting. Indulge your senses in sophisticated offerings prepared with the finest of French culinary technique. Monsieur Paul's is probably one of our favorite restaurants in Epcot. Yes. Definitely. It's it's super wonderful. It's really very tasty. So this place is really, really beautiful. So when you walk in, there is a teeny tiny little table, desk, where you check in. And I they believe take you they up. call it the hostess stand. Shut your mouth. Right? I couldn't remember that. And I was trying to think of like a fancy French word for it, and I couldn't. I was thinking of like the concierge desk, but it's not. And then you walk up this really beautiful spiral staircase. I love spiral staircases. This just sets up for the meal. It really does. The railings are this nice, deep mahogany wood. Everything else is like this cream-colored walls. The staircase has a really pretty carpet on it that's a little bit of a pattern, but not anything over-the-top insane. And then there's kind of pictures on the wall going up the stairs, which is beautiful. And then you get upstairs, and right On the left, as you're walking into the dining room, right before the dining room, is their wine cellar. Wine closet, wine room. room. It's incredible to look at. And every time I have to use the restroom, I just kind of stop and, like, stare at all the wines. It's really beautiful. So if you can't take the stairs, they do have a small elevator for you to go up in, so you don't have to worry that you have to climb this beautiful staircase if you aren't able to climb this beautiful staircase. Fun fact, the first time we went, I thought the only bathroom was downstairs in Chefs de France, but there's actually one upstairs. This is one of the few in-park, might be the only in-park restaurant that actually has a dress code. We'll have to check into that. The dress code yeah, is... because I was trying to think, like, Cinderella's Castle doesn't. No. So, I'll read... The dress, the brief part of the dress code. Men must wear khaki slacks or dress shorts. So there is a minimum dress code. And dress your attire is welcome. Men must wear khaki slacks or dress shirts and collared shirts. Jeans may be worn if in good condition. Sports coats are optional. Collared shirts, not colored shirts. Did I say colored shirts? I'm sorry. It's just slurdy. So you can hear it very <laughs> Women well. must wear capri pants, skirts, dresses, or dress shorts. Jeans may be worn if in good condition. Not permitted are tank tops, flip-flops, swimsuits... Swimsuit cover-ups, hats for gentlemen, cutoffs, torn clothing, and or t-shirts with offensive language and graphics. Basically, as long as you're dressed presentably, they'll let you in. Yeah, it's 99%. And, like, they mean, like, Nike flip-flops. If you have, like, fancy flip-flops, they'll let you in. They'll, I'm like, they might even let you in with flip-flops, but the main thing is they're trying to indicate is they want you to not look like you're rolled out of bed. 
that no. Basically, 99% of people you see in a Disney park, they would have no problem with it. We usually go here late in the evening, so we'll we usually have made a stop at the hotel and we'll change into another outfit. That's yeah, mainly we because generally we're... with our signature dining, we like to we, we like to dress up. So any excuse to dress up in Disney is awesome. We can't be dressed up for a full day because that's just insanity. So yeah. we like to dress up when it gets a little cooler and we go out to a nice fancy restaurant. But yeah, so like I said, 90 percent of people you see in Disney are dressed appropriately for for you know Monsieur Paul's Monsieur Paul so your Mickey Mouse t-shirt technically doesn't fit but I don't know if they let you in or not but I'm oh, say, not my Mickey Mouse no, t-shirt not, just the Mickey Mouse t-shirt in general the I was like world Mickey Mouse t-shirt? Mickey Mouse t-shirt I think t-shirt. no logo t-shirts right you can't wear a Mickey that. Mouse t-shirt it doesn't say no logo. It just says no t-shirts with uh, and t-shirts with offensive language and or graphics. I'm assuming they mean offensive graphics, not just graphics. But basically, is maybe put an extra t-shirt in your bag just in case. Yeah, put something and put an extra shirt in your bag if you're concerned, or give them a call and be like, "Hey, does this work?" Yeah, that's smart. Always calling. Mm-hmm. Calling is good because the uh, reservation line would be able to answer those questions for mm-hmm. you. So when you get upstairs. After the beautiful wine room, you have window seats and then just kind of the rest of the dining room. And the window seats are gorgeous and they overlook the lagoon. The Seven Seas Lagoon? Yes. uh, No. No. (laughs) No. World show. No. Yes. Is it the Seven Seas Lagoon? Yes, because... um, I don't know why I'm thinking it would be like Seven Seas and Magic Kingdom, but... Because they had children from countries around the world pour water into the Seven Seas Lagoon when they opened Epcot. Oh my god, that is the cutest thing in the entire world. Alright. So it's overlooking the lagoon where you get to see illuminations. Amy and I, I think we've touched on this before, but Amy and I like to make our dinner reservations in Epcot at like 8.55 so that when we walk out of Epcot, we're the last ones walking out of Epcot because there's nothing better than... Empty Epcot. Empty Epcot. Empty Epcot. Empty Epcot is wonderful. And magical. And wonderful. So, our first trip to Monsieur Paul's, we are celebrating our one-year friend anniversary. It was the anniversary of our first time going to Disney, just the two of us. Just the two Two of us. us. Just Just the the two two of us. us. You and I. Like (laughs) mini-me. You and I. We were sitting at a table next to the table next to the window. Yep, that's accurate. But the table next to the window was a two-seater. And we were at a four-seater, which was good because... We ordered a lot of food, and so we needed the huge table. But we got to see illuminations through the window, and I have some really, really pretty pictures of illuminations through the windows. And it's just magical, because you're enjoying dinner in a fancy restaurant, and you get fireworks. Fun side story about the first time we went to Monsieur Paul's. Julie could not decide what she wanted. Oh my gosh, I think we were probably there for like 45 minutes just trying to decide. It was a good... That, it, I think that is the only reason why we were literally the last people out of the yeah. park. It was realistically, it took like 20 minutes because you couldn't decide what you wanted and then you went to the bathroom and went to take a phone call like twice and there's like a group of six people that were in a booth near us. That came after us and left before us. Yes, and they kept giving me like looks... Like, what? Like, what is wrong? What's wrong? Like, what is happening over there? Because not only could you, like, you were having, the wait, waiter kept coming back, and we're like, I'm sorry, we're still deciding. And you, like, went away, and he came back, and he's like, everything all right? And I'm like, yeah, she's fine. She's it just taking a really call. It was a really stressful night for me. It was. It's, like, I'm not complaining. It was just, in my, my end of it was kind of, like, hilarious, because everyone was, like, really, like, like, standing up her date. Yeah, it was like I was stood up or something, or like I was on a bad date. I am not a bad date. No, you're not. I'm Amy's best date ever. But yeah, it was just kind of a funny thing, I think, about Yeah, no, it took a long time. And even Amy and I, I think we got into like, I think this is probably like the first fight Amy and I have ever gotten to in Disney, and it wasn't really a fight, but I was like... I really want to do the three-course meal. And he was like, I don't want to do the three-course meal. And then I was like, but I really think we should do the three-course meal. And he was like, no, I don't want to pay the extra. And then, and then we both did. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was literally at the beginning. I was like, no, no, we're fine. We don't really need it. We don't really need it. And then 20 minutes later, I'm like, yes, three-course meal. Perfect. Fine. Whatever you want. And it was amazing. And it was so funny because I think, I think we were both just really hangry. Yes. And upset about certain things. But we were really yeah. hangry. And by the time, like, even just our first course, the first 
part of this was the amuse bouche. Little, literally a teeny tiny little cup of soup mm. with a little cheese biscuit. Yes. And after that, Amy and I, like, our moods completely changed. We yes. were so happy. We were so, like, elated. And the rest of the dinner was amazing. But up until that point, we were both, like, very much on edge. Yes. Yes. And I get super hangry. She and I think does. I was saving my appetite for this night, too. So, she so was... I didn't eat since, like, 4 o'clock, and it was 9 o'clock at night. And Julie not eating in five hours is like death. I'm never letting you not eat that amount. No, I'm never letting you eat, not eat for that long again. You start getting hangry, and I'm like, Julie, eat this! <laughs> Although, what did, well, we had an early lunch for... Victoria. No, I think we had apple slices or something when we did... Victorian Alberts. Yeah, we we planned that so we would not get hangry. We planned that for Victorian Ag- Alberts so that we would. I'm sorry, where? Victorian Alberts. That's what I thought. Yep. We so like we, to talk about Victorian Alberts. We love Victorian Alberts. Al- Victorian Alberts. Yeah, and the food, like the menu has changed over and over. So mm-hmm. even though Amy and I got, I was really looking forward to getting the same appetizer that I got on my first trip on the second trip mm-hmm. as part of the, I think we decided before we got there that we were going to do the three course yeah. meal again, which was a lot more helpful. Yes. In, we were like, okay, so unless there's nothing good on the three course menu. Yeah. We'll just do or the it prefix again. menu. We'll just get whatever. But obviously, we found something that was amazing on the prefix, and we got it. And I'm so excited to tell you about that because mine was amazing. This is one of the few paid places that has a prefix menu that it regularly Rotates, changes. Yeah. It's very seasonal. Although, honestly, the menu. Yeah, because the first time we were there, no, they were both in. Or never mind. The menu online does not necessarily reflect what tonight's menu is. But it is a somewhat recent menu. In general, it reflects what the menu is most of the time. Yeah. The prefix is the one that kind of rotates because the prefix is what they're able to kind of experiment with new dishes that maybe they want to put on the menu. But generally the menu, although I don't know that. Yeah. A couple of these things are things that have always been on the menu. And a lot of them are seasonal as well because if certain items aren't going to be fresh, they're not going to make that dish. Yeah. The, but yeah, the menu here might not be what's listed online. Most restaurants in Disney, whatever is currently listed online, is accurate to what their menu is. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever looked at this menu before. I have. I have. That's why I know that it. No, I know, but I mean, like, before we've, like, the day of yeah. we're going or before yeah. we've been, I've never actually looked at the menu. I've looked at the menu, like, preparing for a trip. Yeah. But I've never, like, looked at the menu that day and been like, this is what I'm going to get, this is what I'm going to get, because yeah. I always know that it's going to be potentially different. Amazing, yes. They always change the soups. They always have the truffle soup. But Which is amazing. They change the other ones. Mm, truffles. So they only have a dinner menu. Because they only serve dinner. And yum. Yes. So the hors d'oeuvres, or appetizers, are an oven-baked egg. Now, I was talking to Amy before we started this podcast about how this is something that we absolutely have to try, and that we should probably try everything on this menu, and perhaps not get the prefix menu. Or maybe one of us can There's get the prefix. There's another then... prefix menu. I've already looked later, scrolling down on this. There's a second prefix menu with more things. See, that's never there when we go. Well, we'll find out, won't we? That's I'm not okay. saying we have to do that. I'm just saying that's another well, thing. Well, I think if we do a prefix, it should be one prefix yeah. that we split. And then a and bunch then of other another, things. And then try yeah. like 18 appetizers. Yeah, so I'll order a prefix or you'll order the prefix and then the other one will order 18 appetizers. That's generally what happens when yeah. we order one prefix. Just kidding, Amy. I love you. So the, f- <laughs> the first appetizer. You're still my Disney wife. The first hors d'oeuvre is an I oven be- baked egg. I better be the, the uh, reservations under my name. <laughs> Don't piss off Amy because she's the one whose reservation it's under and she could take someone else instead of me. The oven baked egg is pea salad, arugula, truffle cream. Oh my god, I just want to eat all the truffle cream. And green asparagus. Oh, <gasps> They had purple asparagus at Star Market the other day. I took a picture for you. Dang. This because just sounds amazing. It really It does. has arugula. How and, could it be bad? And, and truffle. I bet it's the creamiest, most perfect oven baked egg you will ever have it better be oh it sounds so magical they have ahi tuna served three ways cured seared and in roulette 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 i never say that right niswa style what would you get what's niswa style um seared they seared. all seem seared because i know with like a niswa salad they usually will sear the outside with like 
salt and pepper. This is seared with in roulettes, so the other one, so it might be two different seared seared ones. and in roulettes. Yeah. Anyway, three ways that ahi tuna is deliciously done. Yeah, definitely. Because I don't think that anything you could ever get on this menu would be bad. No. Yeah, I feel like the there only- may be some things that you may not want to try, or that may not be your Amuse. style <laughs> of food, but. Everything on this menu has to be done amazing. Yes. I, nothing that we've tried has ever been bad. Michael came here on that trip that he went to Disney, and he still talks about the scallop dish. I know. I almost got the scallop dish, but I'm so glad that we got the lamb. Oh, my God. The lamb is so he, delicious. He has a picture of it on his phone still. That's so awesome. <laughs> I love it. Um, the next item is the compressed cantaloupe melon. Like, even this. Listen to this. It's cantaloupe melon. I don't even like cantaloupe. I mean, I do, but it's not my favorite melon. I much prefer honeydew. But ready? Bayonne ham chiffonade. 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 So very thinly sliced, sliced ham. ham. Uh, lime sorbet. Fresh mint and Parmesan tuile. Mm. What? I have to agree with you on cantaloupe. I also like honeydew melon better. But a perfectly ripe cantaloupe is so delicious. Oh, yeah. But you don't get cantaloupe. But you don't get perfect. Like, I'm sure they I do like cantaloupe when it's mixed in a fruit salad because it, like, absorbs the other fruit flavors. Technically, the cantaloupe we know in the United States, I believe, is called a muskmelon. And the cantaloupe that they have in France is actual cantaloupe. Oh, and yeah. it's a... Oh, I bet they probably import it, too. Yeah. I would, I would be curious to find out which cantaloupe they're talking about. If we get it, we'll find out. So Why then, was the mouse and the turtle upset that they couldn't get married? Someone told them they can't elope. <laughs> I was trying to think like a mouse and a turtle. This is going to be a joke about them. And it was about cantaloupe. I love it. You got me. Obviously it was about cantaloupe. God. You got me. I know this wasn't our Skipper's Canteen episode. You weren't expecting the 8 million puns. So the next ap- hors d'oeuvre appetizer is my favorite. The soup aux truffles VGE which is oxtail broth with braised beef, vegetables, black winter truffles covered in puff pastry. So it is a broth-based soup, obviously. And there's... No! No. There's little chunks of braised beef and vegetables, like, I want to say carrots and some potatoes. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Well, obviously, they're truffles. Sorry if that's stupid. And a very large quantity of black truffle shreds shavings shavings oh my gosh yeah this was so delicious amy let me try some oh and then they they have it in one of those little pedestal bowls that kind of have the little lion heads on either side you know what i'm talking about like a ceramic dish that you can bake in it's a ceramic dish that you can bake in, and then they have it topped with puff pastry so then they bake it that way so the puff pastry puffs and then all the soup bubbles into it, and it makes this really nice crust around the outside of the bowl yeah. that Amy peels off and eats, and it's delicious, yeah. and it's I'm amazing. Not, I'm not going to lie. The puff pastry crumbs get everywhere. Oh, it is, it's so worth it's, it. It's fine. They have crummers. They'll come help you with your crumb situation. It's delicious. It's amazing. Crummers. <laughs> uh, you remember, Jade, we went on a cruise, and in the dining room, the servers came by, and she had a bunch of crumbs from her, her bread. It was one of the first couple nights. And they had a crummer. And so they're doing the, you know, scraping off the crumbs. And she had never seen one before and had no idea what they were going to do with the crumbs once they got them in a <laughs> pile. And she... Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, because, like, a crummer has a little, like, scoopy thing that you can pick them all up with. She thought that they were going to Crumb just... onto the floor? No, into her lap, like, where her oh, napkin no. was. And so... I see this happening, and I realize exactly what's going through her head, and I'm just, like, holding on to the table, trying not to laugh hysterically while I see the confusion on her face, because, you know, it was just really funny. You ready for this next one? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try it. Yeah. Pâté de crabe royale, servi en terri et en salade de better... Better is. Creme de raifort, chips, and... Coupé de pommes and beterrave. Well, now we know how to say beets in French. I mean, I did not pronounce it in a way that you actually say beets in French. I think I did pretty good with the first half of it. Actually, you did overall really good having no idea how to pronounce any of it. 
I don't. It's interesting because I can read French because I know Spanish and Italian. Yeah, but pronunciation speaking it is yeah. just another ball game. I would call it pets de crab royal servi entre et en salade de betteries creme de raffle chips et capu de pommes et betteries. Yeah, so. Pretty, pretty close. Yeah, you did. I did considering I don't speak French, and that was my first time really reading anything French, and that was my first time seeing any of those words. I barely speak French, but I am French, so... You I, should, should pretend. I, I, I can BS really well. So, literally, it translates to king crab legs shelled and served two ways. Whole in a beet salad with horseradish cream, chips, and shavings of apple and beet. I'm down for oh, it. Oh, sorry. Served whole. And in a beet salad with horseradish cream, chips, and shavings of apples and beets. I'm still down for it. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. So I yeah, love no, beets. we definitely knew that. And Julie loves beets. Both. And king crab legs. And king crab legs. And, horse and horseradish. Radish. And chips. And apples. And shavings. Just kidding. I don't know. And whole. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I particularly love two ways. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite meal. Yes. Two ways is Julie's favorite meal ever. The main course. There's more French words, so I'm going to try again. Bar noir es- ecai- Nope. Cool. Scales. Black sea bass. De pommes de terre. Black sea bass in potato scales, fresh spinach, and rosemary sauce. So, this fish usually changes, but there's always a fish on the menu that's served in potato scales. So, I just realized when I told you how to say boof and so beef and potatoes, I technically told you how to say beef and apples because it's boof. A pomme de terre, because potato is apple of the earth. Pomme de terre. Whatever. <laughs> it just occurred to me. <laughs> Sorry. Bouffe et pomme de terre. Julie, edit that into the beginning. Maybe. <laughs> Do it anyway. <laughs> um, so, there's all... <laughs> Oh, black sea bass sounds so good. So, there's always a fish on the menu that is served in potato scales. Right now, it is black sea bass. In the past, it has been red snapper. It's really cool. If you like fish, it's a really delicious dish and really, really beautiful in presentation. The potato scales concept is a really good example of the fine detail that French fine dining includes, basically. They make tiny potato scales and then they sit there and layer them one at a time. Yeah, they're basically round potatoes it's basically a potato and it's cut into you know round slices Mm -hmm. and they are layered on top of the fish to look like scales and we're not talking to find a small potato and cut it thin we're talking you use a little cookie cutter type thing or make a cylinder and then slice it so they're all evenly sized and beautiful and they brown up all pretty Mm. oh my god this yeah it's amazing so i've made this once before not french style I took a beautiful piece of fish and I made potato scales. I actually layered it with, I cut teeny tiny thin slices of garlic mm. and layered it with garlic scales yes. and then put the potato scales I over it. I remember this. I wasn't was, there for it. No, I took so many pictures and yes. sent them to Amy. But I made mine Mexican because I served it with salsa and guacamole on top. But uh, I used some like cumin and some mm. Mexican spices and things like that. And it was so amazing. Pavé. De flatin ponche. Might be pouché. I don't know. I like it. It's a butter poached halibut filet. Squid so. ink rice pilaf. <gasps> Sorry, I'm very excited about that. Calamari Sorry. and a butternut squash emulsion. Mm. So once upon a time, I had squid ink pasta. And it's basically black pasta and it's delicious and amazing and oh, wonderful. Yes. So I can only imagine that this is also super delicious. Mm-hmm. The black sea bass is put on a second time. <laughs> so... It's the English version. Yeah. Uh, so we're not going to go over that. No. Nope. Uh, so the roasted guinea fowl breast is served with rice pilaf with mushrooms, parmesan emulsion, and chicken jus. A guinea fowl... Chicken jus just doesn't sound as appealing know, as <laughs> any other... Yes. Jus. A, a guinea fowl... Fa- fa- <laughs> a guinea fowl. A guinea fowl. A guinea fowl is a... I think it's traditionally a game bird, but they're raised now like chickens a guinea fowl is gonna be similar to chicken it's probably a little more gamier than chicken but it's gonna be delicious as is everything in this restaurant mm-hmm. parmesan emulsion like rice what? pilaf so with mushroom chicken juice like i feel like if anywhere is gonna make a chicken juice 
Can we call it chicken jus? Because chicken juice just sounds gross. Ooh. Roasted, stuffed, suckling pig sliced. Mm. I just want the whole pig. I yeah. We can we can do that. There's a place in Quincy. That serves pig. Or that we can That order we can a pig. go purchase a s- cooked pig? cooked suckling pig. We could also get one ourselves and cook it, because I do have a pig spit, but we just no, no, no. it's too big. I wanna cook one in the oven like a teeny tiny pig, like Julia Child does. Oh yeah, we could do that. And you put the aluminum foil in his mouth because the apple would shrivel. You put the apple in at the end. Mm-hmm. Ah, so it's served with mashed potatoes. Sorry, the roasted stuffed suckling pig sliced. Roasted stuffed suckling pig. And I imagine it's sliced to indicate you don't get an entire pig. I don't know why. It just sounds so... This menu, I don't know what they were doing with it. The menu you know, is... you don't realize how much Disney screws up their things until you look at every single one of their menu. And then you realize it's not edited to perfection. Like how they have black sea bass twice. twice. <laughs> so it comes with mashed potatoes, caramelized apples, roasted sweet potatoes, and pork jus. So the next thing on the menu is the grilled beef tenderloin, which is potato macai? I would say macare. That sounds real French. Occasionally French things don't sound so French. I don't believe it. Macare with tome de savoy cheese. Savoy. Savoy cheese. Oyster mushroom fricassee. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Beef jus reduction. And creamy sauce. I like all those that things. That also sounds super delicious. You know what would go really well with that on the side? I think a horseradish cream sauce on the side would go delicious with that. Maybe the cream sauce is horseradish. Maybe they're just leaving up to the imagination. Maybe they just want to surprise you. Mm-hmm. So, f- next So, up- is the prestige the better one? Or, no. The deju... Digestion. 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 So, Digestion. so there are Woman. two. Sweet. There are two prefix menus. One is three courses, and the other one is seven. Uh, it's technically what? four courses if you count dessert. Okay, well, and it's then, also yeah. technically five courses because they come up with an amuse bouche too. That's true. But I don't know. Maybe that is the first course. Yes, it is. So the seven course meal is actually the first three courses from our menu, eight. and then. Seven, eight, nine, nine. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. There's six. There we go. Yeah. The first. Oh, the first yeah. is the amuse bouche. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. We can count. <laughs> it's very confusing. Okay. So the first course of the three course slash four course menu is a green asparagus with velouté and cream sauce. So this is the amuse bouche. It changes probably more often than anything else on the menu because it's just a quick kind of opening of the palate to the meal that is coming up and it's usually a cold dish and it's delicious and amazing and wonderful and magical and it's small. It's just sort of something they have. It kind of like brightens the palate and yeah. opens you up to enjoying the rest of the meal. It's something that'll complement the rest of the f- food that you're eating and yum. It's quickly prepared so basically right after you order they can bring it right out to you uh, and it's really flavorful but not, as you said, it clean, cleanses the palate, brightens the palate. It's very flavorful, but nothing... It's more of like a very fresh... Yeah, it's nothing that's going to weigh your palate down or... Be too spicy or be anything too spicy like that to or compromise too fatty. your palate for any yeah. of the flavors of the rest of the meal. It's almost like a palate cleanser, exact, not like a we'll traditional palate. Like a palate enhancer. Yes, yes. The second course is your choice of appetizer. Amy gets the oxtail broth with bays. <laughs> what? Oxtail broth with braised beef, vegetable, and the truffle soup. It's delicious. Uh, ooh, the oven baked egg with arugula and truffle cream is also an option. And then the tuna serve three ways. Again, whenever we go, these are never the items. So don't get too excited about it. Mm-hmm. It's always changing. It's always the There's beef. usually a lot of options. But the fun thing about the prefix menu is there's usually one option that isn't available on the regular menu, mm-hmm. which I think is what tripped Amy and I up the first time because we wanted one of the items that was on the regular menu, but we also really wanted two of the items that were on the prefix menu. So we ended up going with the prefix menu because it just we made the right choice. But it's just really funny because why couldn't we just have it all? So the third course, which is the main course, is the Dover Sole with Taliette. This mushrooms and creamy sabanyon, roasted lamb chop and braised saddle with vegetables and polenta, napoleon and lamb jus, or roasted duck margaret with white bean puree and fricassee, braised crispy duck and jus. So uh, as you'll see on the third course, none of those items are available on the actual regular menu. Yeah. I believe one of the two times that, maybe even both, that we got the prefix menu, 
there was a similar, not exactly the same, but similar. There was duck like a item. lamb. There was a duck. Yeah, and I got the duck. And, and I got the lamb. And you got the lamb. And the duck. We both got the lamb the first time. Yeah, I think we both got the lamb the first time. The we second we did. Yeah, the second time we got different entrees. I got the duck, and it was the most perfectly cooked duck ever. Now, perfectly cooked duck is kind of rare. And I don't mean rare like to rare find. To, I mean, it is rare to find as well. Yeah, it is rare to find as well. It is cooked to be very pink in the center. And you'd think, oh my gosh, it's poultry. But it's not. I mean, it is. But yeah. it's a gamey meat. It's not necessarily considered poultry. So it doesn't have the same salmonella issues risks. with undercooked chicken. Never undercooked chicken. Never undercooked chicken. It's not okay. But yeah, it was just delicious. And again, like I said, perfectly cooked to that like rare, medium rare for a duck, which some people will disagree. But... So just in case you order the duck, keep in mind that it will come out on the rarer side. Like lamb. Well, the lamb is cooked on a rarer side as well. I think with the duck, they did ask or talk about how it was cooked and be like, is that okay? And specifically when anytime a server or, or they send the chef out to talk about how something is cooked... I will usually tell them, I want you to cook it how you, or, or I want the chef to cook it how they feel it is supposed to be cooked, how it should be cooked. For example, Julie and I like our steaks, our beef, rare. We will get it medium rare if it's a cut, like a ribeye, for example, or anything particularly marbled that needs it to be medium rare to actually bring out the full flavor of or the Or like meat. the Wagyu that needed to be cooked way yes. more than the that Mizaki because, oh yeah, because yes. that marbling just needed extra, extra time to sit and marble and be magical and oh, it was like butter. Also, really from Victoria and Alberts, yeah, we're going to talk about them a lot. Eventually. Someday, we'll it it'll all be condensed into one really long episode. And then you get choice of dessert, which we will get to. So, the four, three, four course prefix menu. If you want the truffle soup, and or should I say, if you're on the dining plan with two credits. Do we talk about how it's two credits? The, no, we're signature dining. Yeah, signature dining, oh, two sorry. credits. So, the prefix menu, if you're on the dining plan has an upcharge of, I believe, $30. We don't normally talk about, you know, the cost of things because they can fluctuate, but at this point it's relevant. The oxtail broth base... And the thing is, with the dining plan, even on the signature, you get a meal and a dessert, and now a drink, but not an appetizer. So... For example, the oxtail braised... The oxtail broth with braised beef, vegetables... Truffle soup. The truffle soup, yes, thank you. The truffle soup... Is $29. It is worth $29. So if you are planning on getting this soup or are interested in any of the appetizers, get one of the prefix meals because it's that extra $30 that you'd be paying for your truffle, but then you also get your super delicious, awesome, amazing amuse bouche. Yes. So it's just, you know, like I said, we don't normally talk about costs and prices unless there's a good reason. This is a good reason. So both times Amy and I have been, we got the prefix menu, like we were talking about earlier. It took us a while to figure out what we wanted to do for eating the first time, but we did decide on the prefix menu. It came out with this really delicious amuse-bouche, which was a potato and leek soup that had a really yummy little cream swirl on top of it that came out in this teeny tiny little dish. Mm. And a so it was a savory puff. Yeah, a sh- savory pâté. So basically it was a puff. With some cheese crumbled on top, probably a gruyere. And inside, there was some inside. Well, it was mixed in with oh, the dough. Oh, just the dough. Yeah. Right. Um, but, like, even just the little cheese puff was amazing. I could have had, like, 40 of those. Yeah, we both wanted about 40 of those. But it was just a great start to the meal because we didn't get 40 of them. We only got one, and it made us hungry for the rest of the meal. Mm-hmm. A mousse bouge that did exactly what an amuse bouge should do. Yeah, I said that. Yes. And for appetizers, Amy got her truffle soup, which she's already talked about a million times. And I got, I don't know. You definitely got one of the tuna. It was, I think it was, it was, it was salmon. salmon. Yeah. yeah. It was salmon and it was, it was rolls of salmon and there was goat cheese in the middle of it. And then there were these two different sauces that came with it. One was this apple reduction and the other one was like a parsley chive i don't know it was super delicious i have pictures and so they were rolled and they were cut kind of diagonally so they were stacked i have pictures i'll show them to you it was beautiful this was probably this was the reason why i wanted to get the prefix 
because I wanted this appetizer, but my issue was I wasn't sure how I felt about the main courses on the prefix because there was something on the regular menu that I was interested in that wasn't offered on the prefix menu. So that was my conundrum because I really wanted these, but I didn't want to spend the extra money for them. Yeah. I'm glad I got the prefix. It was probably the most delicious salmon I've ever had, and the goat cheese wasn't too overpowering. It was just absolutely perfect, and... Once you see this, you're going to understand. The presentation was absolutely beautiful, and oh, those sauces that came along with it just complemented it so well, and it was so delicious and so amazing, and I want to eat it every time, ever, for always. And so I was actually really bummed that this was not the appetizer that they had for the second time, because I had to get something different. She was in shock. She was very distraught. This was a time when we were sitting almost by the window, and then they moved us to the window seats because we asked. And we kept leaning towards the window. So Amy and I both got the lamb plate for this meal. And it was served with red quinoa Mm. in a like red tomato broth as well. And there were turnips that were, they used a melon baller to get us these beautiful little teeny tiny cylinders of turnips that were placed around this. And then the lamb was just plated in the middle and the lamb was cooked absolutely to perfection with amazing French herbs. And Amy and I both got the same thing. And it's very rare, again, like we said before, for Amy and I to get the exact same thing. But I can't imagine having anything else on that trip so on the second trip the amuse bouche i believe it had dill on it it had this really yummy crema on it it had a parmesan twill i'll show you pictures don't worry you'll be able to see what i'm talking about and then i can't remember if it was crab or tuna i believe it was crab because it doesn't really look tuna ish um but it also had another green sauce and an apple sauce like an apple puree as well. And this was also insanely delicious and wonderful. I love an amuse-bouche because it always changes and it's always delightful. Yeah, I think this one might have been... I don't know. It was delicious. But the amuse-bouche was a little bit different. Instead of being a little soup and a thing, it was what I just described. So my appetizer was this lovely lobster dish. I don't know that it... It was basically an entire lobster tail on top of this really fresh cucumber salad And then there were slivers of apple as well as some sliced turnips and some other delicious sauces. Uh, It was a lot sweet and a little bit savory. The lobster obviously had sweet juices with it, but all of the other components were a little bit sweeter. And then the cucumber salad was just this fresh addition to it. And it was so delicious and so wonderful. And Amy got her truffle soup. I will definitely get a different appetizer the next time we're at Monte Paul's because it's amazing. As I said before, I will get a different soup, but if I'm ever solo there again, I'll just make a reservation and get truffle soup and orangina. Mm, orangina. So my meal this time was also lamb, but it was served a little bit differently. Yes, it was. It was lamb chops, and I was definitely a little overwhelmed when he brought it out. So he brought out this plate, and it was this large plate, and on this large plate was thyme and rosemary and all these delicious herbs with a smaller plate on top of that, and then on top of that was four lamb chops all together. Still connected to each other. Still connected. And I had to take a video of it, but what he did was in front of me cut my four lamb chops, plated them beautifully on my plate, and then just drizzled this incredible jus sauce over them. And it was served on like these little potato magical delicious. I don't know. You'll see the picture. And it was basically like potatoes. And then there was like mashed potato cream inside of them and almost like a florette on top of them. You have to see if you can uh, post the video. Yeah. Oh, and I'll post the video for you too. And just the most delicious sauce with it. And Amy got... Well, the custom of finishing the preparation of the meal at the table side, I can't think of the terminology right now, but where you bring it out, present it, and then finish it and plate it is a very French technique. It's a hallmark of French dining. That doesn't mean every dish is going to come out that way, but certain dishes will. There's a dish, pressed duck, I believe. Like, how you have pressed duck is it has to be partially prepared tableside. Like, that's just how it works. So it's a very French thing to do. And a very French thing to experience. So I had duck two ways. 
one of them was the standard standard breast that we were talking about before, but instead of a crispy duck like they have on the menu now, it was more like a duck confit, and it was accompanied with a bit of a, a jus, a thickened jus. I remember it was nice and thick and stuck to everything. The duck had pistachios crumbled up and sprinkled on top, and on the side it had little mushrooms, and I'm trying to look at the photo to see. No, we don't have a photo of that one. I'm trying to think what it was on. It was mushrooms, some sort of fancy green vegetable that was carved into little shapes, like roulettes, not roulettes, like they were cut into little marquee shape, and it had a, I want to say cream, but it was more like a mousse made from parsnips, and then some, probably, I believe, some microgreens, if I'm remembering it properly. It was really tasty, and I love it. And I want to put it in my mouth, and I want them to make it again. That is the one disappointing thing about this menu is that it does change so often. It's awesome because we get to try all sorts of different things, but when our favorite thing is taken off the menu, it is also really sad. Yes. Like, Amy would probably cry oceans of tears if her truffle soup was ever taken off the menu. Yeah, even though I'm not going to have it again for a while. Just I am, just I am. It's really good soup. So they came out with another prefix meal that is seven courses. The first course is also the amuse-bouche, like we talked about before, which is the green asparagus with velouté and lemon cream. And then the second course is grilled octopus. This is served with bell pepper and corn fricassee, red pepper emulsion, and micro mustard greens. That sounds super delicious. The third course is Dover sole, which is what we talked about on the first prefix meal. And it's served with tellier this mushrooms and creamy sauvignon. The fourth course is kind of a palate cleanser. It's verbena and mint sorbet. I was just going to say that. This is literally a palate cleanser. <laughs> and if you remember correctly from the princess diaries, don't put it all in your mouth at once. The fifth course is veal three ways. It came with a spinach puree, carrots with mustard, and veal jus. I don't know what three ways it is. It doesn't tell you. It's a surprise. Ooh, the sixth course is choice of three imported cheeses. We would have to get three different cheeses and try six. Oh, yeah. If we ever do the prefix menu dis- disgust in here, just go, yeah, whatever it is, the seven course prefix menu, we're absolutely getting all the cheese. And you'll wink at them and be like, hey, you want to bring us more cheese? Because we love cheese. I will Jeez. totally wink at them. She's better at winking them at them than I am. And the seventh course is your choice of desserts. Which we are about to get to. How convenient that it just comes right after that. So, you got this one, right? I did. I got the meringue. Which is mango and coconut sorbets, vanilla, chantilly, and exotic fruit coulis. So, it was really excellent sorbets, very flavorful. Mango and coconut are... It's two of my favorite flavors, as we've talked about before, or cover something in coconut, I'll probably eat it. Like, I'll eat most things. We kind of, we, we've kind of made it seem like I'm a very picky eater. I just don't like breakfast buffets, <laughs> and, I, and, and I'm not a big fan of warm shrimp. <laughs> but no, I really will eat most anything. Vanilla Chantilly is basically like a whipped cream, but a little looser than your, like, standard whipped cream, and it's flavored with vanilla, it's got a little sugar in it, it's really tasty. And exotic fruit coulis, it, if I'm remembering correctly, because I don't know if we have a picture or not, Julie found a picture, it was one exotic fruit puree, and if, looking at this now, if I remember correctly, I think it was passion fruit, because I don't remember it being mango. And also, as we for, I forgot to mention as I'm saying this, it is on top of a strip of meringue and there are crumbled what looks like mango and coconut meringues on top of their opposing sorbets in the cunel shape which is that little thing i was talking about where you play with spoons back and forth a bunch of times there until we go you forget looks, what it's called yes cunels until it looks like a marquee shape and then some powdered meringue sprinkled about it was really tasty i and really light it was light it was delicious it was exotic it just made me feel very good inside and every dessert should make you feel good inside. Yep. They also have caramelized apples, which sounds pretty good, but pretty simple. Uh, shortbread, Brittany style. Vanilla cream, green apple sorbet, and warm caramel sauce. But a, caram- an, a caramelized apple tart, caramel apple tart, 
which is basically what that boils down to, is kind of a really French dish. It's, oh, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's a classic. It's a classic. That's, it's uh, not. It, yeah, it sounds super delicious, yeah, though. It, it's not quite your apple pie, but it's a fr- very French way to do apples. I like it. The Vacherin Glace Vanille and Creme Chantilly. Frambose being raspberry in French. That's, That's how you pronounce it. Frambose. Uh, vanilla ice cream, raspberry sorbet, and a meringue, and whipped. The next thing is the milk chocolate sphere. I got this more for the presentation than the actual dessert because I'm not a fan of milk chocolate. I like my dark chocolate. But it is uh, chocolate almond cake, praline, and chocolate cream, light hazelnut biscuit with chocolate ice cream, warm chocolate, and cognac sauce. This is really cool. So all of those things that I just described are actually served in this milk chocolate sphere. They take the cognac sauce warmed and pour it over the top of it. As it all melts, you get the deliciousness inside. If I remember correctly... Mine was fruit. What? There was, like, orange inside mine. Yeah, I think it was a little bit different, but if I remember correctly, when you got this, you were just stuffed to the gills. Yeah, and I just wanted it to and, be pretty. Yeah, you were like, well, I'm gonna I get a dessert, might as well get the dessert. I had a few bites of it, because I obviously had to try it, and it definitely was really tasty, but agreed, I prefer dark chocolate, but I feel like a dark chocolate sphere wouldn't melt as easily and quickly and not be as pretty and a show, and part of that is, is the show, and if you haven't figured it out yet a lot of french food is about presentation yep uh they had a warm chocolate almond cake with raspberry coulis in the center hazelnut crust and hazelnut ice cream which also sounds insanely delicious Mm -hmm. they did not have this one on the menu when we went and then i got the other meringue which was vanilla ice cream raspberry sorbet vanilla chantilly and raspberry coulis which was basically the exact same thing that amy got except it was vanilla ice cream and raspberry sorbet instead of mango and coconut sorbet so it was basically served the same way mine had a raspberry coulis on it some fun meringues on top of it, a meringue served underneath it. They wrote happy birthday on mine because it was mm-hmm. my birthday, and I'll share a picture. Mine had more of it a was really good. flavor. Yeah, mine was definitely not tropical flavors, but it, but was, it was amazing. so delicious. Well, raspberry and it was, is amazing. And it was super great because it wasn't too heavy, and it was just what you needed as like a finale to the meal. French desserts are really good. French desserts would have to be... My favorite, if, if if I have to pick a culture to make my desserts forever, there are a few things I'll miss, but I would pick French. Because but we do also have a culinary degree in French pastry, so we have learned from Delphin that you can make all sorts of meals French. Yes. Like tiramisu. Yes. Just <laughs> add some orange zest. Yes. I remember Jacques was bomb. so mad. Oh, he was so mad. So, side story, yeah. uh, tiramisu is obviously Italian. Very Italian. And we had our French pastry chef teaching us how to make French pastry. So, basically, a tiramisu is lady fingers soaked in espresso with, like, a mascarpone cream... Deliciousness. Deliciousness. Layered. And then, on top, there's some, like, espresso dust. Yeah, sometimes, like, well, it's, it's... Or cocoa dust. Cocoa dust, and yep. they do pretty things sometimes. So, that's your basic Italian deliciousness. We didn't do it with Lady Fingers. We made a... We did make we Lady... We made a balm cake. Yeah, we made Lady Fingers for something completely different. We made different, Lady though. Fingers completely different, but I believe that was also when... He, the, the, the cake we made was like... Was the Lady Finger dough. Was the Lady piped, Finger dough. But it was dough. piped into the round. It was piped into a round. And then we made it into a bone cake. Which is like a, a half dome, dome. Which is basically a half dome cake. And I remember the cream that we made, we ended up putting orange zest into it. Yes. So we did soak the lady fingers in an espresso, espresso some sort of alcoholic, definitely. I've, I've had other like Italian style tiramisus that have been like the espresso and an alcohol. I can't, it, it's varied. And it's really good, so that's not inaccurate, yeah. but it was definitely like no, a cognac. No, but obviously, Delphin, <laughs> yes. when you could add a spress- when you could add add cognac alcohol to it, to, yes. would generally add cognac. Yeah. Or kirsch, yes. depending. On what you're, yeah. <laughs> if it was fruity, it was kirsch. If it was on the chocolatey or darker side, cognac. Yes. Uh, so we also added orange zest to into the cream. the cream. So basically what we did was we started with the cream inside... The dish that we were using, the round dish, and then layered our cake with more of the cream, soaked in, obviously, as it was getting smaller smaller circles. Well, smaller to start and then getting larger. 
And then we flipped it over and used a torch to release it. So it was this beautiful dome. And then powdered the espresso on top of it. It was delicious. It was It was, was amazing. It was beautiful. But it was not your traditional Italian tiramisu because it was our yes. French pastry chef. Yes. Making a tiramisu. One of the other students... So our- yes, French yeah. pastry is how I would yes. like to enjoy my pastries. Yes. One of the other students in our class, wa- Giacomo, was super Italian. And the entire class, he was basically just having a coronary... It was, was not a, it was very hysterical. It, it was wasn't. it was a funny it was a funny day only to watch how jokingly upset Jack yes, was getting. I mean yeah. he was upset, but Delphin had this very relaxed, comedic, very sarcastic personality yes. for a Frenchman. So yes. him and Giacomo had a really funny back and forth. So when they oh, made, yeah. so when they made this dish, it was just Yeah, no, he hilarious. Was great. So onto the kids' appetizers. They're actually pretty healthy. Yeah, I looked at this earlier and it I'm impressed. It's really good. So cherry tomato salad with fried cheese stick. A single fried cheese stick. Actually, this is really cool. The way it's presented mm-hmm. is literally a mozzarella cheese stick. Mm-hmm. But they presented it in a very French way and it's really cool. Oh. Yeah. Um and do then we, a, do we know a picture of it? Not not like I know we didn't I don't know get a picture it. of it. Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll have to find a picture of it cuz I don't so know. So a about. <laughs> small pommentier of bouf, mashed potato pie. It sounds kind of like a shepherd's pie of sorts. It basically is. It's par parmentier. With a parmesan tuile. Love me some tuiles. That's the word I was trying to say. That's why I said it. <laughs> the kids entrees are seared chicken tenders served with creamy chicken sauce and choice of french fries green beans mashed potatoes rice or broccoli that's a lot of side options hey it's a lot of places just do french fries so i'm or glad like apple have, slices yeah so i'm really glad they have a lot of options giving kids choices is good yeah absolutely uh grilled beef tenderloin is another option with beef sauce and choice of french fries green beans mashed potatoes rice or broccoli And the roast salmon, served with tartar sauce, and you guessed it, choice of french fries, green beans, mashed potatoes, rice, or broccoli. All sound delicious. And even if you're an adult and you don't want to eat that much, don't go here. (laughs) Maybe go downstairs where it's a lot less expensive. Oh, yeah. If you don't know what you like for French cuisine but want to still try it, the Chefs Chefs de France, France. which we are going to on this trip, so we can tell you all about that when it happens, uh, is a little bit less expensive. Considerably less expensive. And a great way to ease yourself into delicious French cuisine. It is a one credit meal, and it was the first restaurant that was opened by Chef Paul Paul Bocuse in 1982. That was close. Yeah, it was well, open in that's 1982. When Epcot opened, that would be stupid. Yeah, and then I, he was also, as we mentioned earlier, involved in this restaurant as well. I've eaten at Chefs de France. De France, it's very good. I went when they still had Remy running around, or well, being carried around on a beautiful silver platter. But they unfortunately do not have him running or being. I keep saying running around, carried around on a beautiful silver platter. Hopefully, they will have him come out of the kitchen again when they open up the Ratatouille ride in a million years. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. We'll be there. <laughs> yes, we will. Several times that year, probably too. Mm-hmm. Kids dessert: choice of chocolate or vanilla ice cream, or a chocolate mousse cake. That sounds delicious. With a chocolate sauce center and vanilla ice cream. Go with the moose cake. It sounds delicious. It does sound delicious. Yeah, it's a really nice restaurant. It really was. It's When you go upstairs, don't expect anything. Oh, the chandeliers were super cool. They were. They were basically a whole bunch of little orbs. I'll post a picture. It was beautiful. Yes. Um, Hmm. The restaurant has a very extensive wine list. We mentioned that when we talked about walking by the wine cellar closet room we generally don't get wine here for some reason it's just it's pricey wine and i think we're just focusing on the food at that point but and there's what we order is so many different items it's hard to pair one glass of wine or one bottle of wine with all the items we have some fun and we order because dining plan comes with a now it comes with an alcoholic beverage but before it just came with a non-alcoholic beverage orangina was as we may have heard me mention earlier is a beverage option, and we both love Orangina, so we usually get the Orangina. 
Now, if we're doing dining plan again, and yeah, we I go, feel like we I might need to we'll pair do. or ask them what they'd pair with yeah. the dinner selections that we make. Yeah, that's a good point. It's really tough though because we usually get like a fish for our appetizer and then a red meat for our meal. So maybe we'll just pair a, a drink with our main course. Main course, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, so if you are into wine, definitely a good place to to check out because they have a very nice wine list. Upon entering, you will walk by a bottle of Louis the Thirteenth cognac, which, if I am remembering correctly, is one of the world's most expensive high end cognacs. I've not seen this bottle get any emptier. <laughs> But I am sure that there are people that purchase a pour. So a bottle of it, I'm literally just looking it up on Google, ranges from $600 to $3,000. And there's another, there's an article about the Four Seasons getting a $22,000 bottle of cognac, the Louis the Thirteenth. So it's the best cognac you're going to find. We've never tried it. I'm not even sure how much it costs for, for a pour. But if you're into that, that's definitely something you can get there. No, yeah, I imagine their wine list is fluctuating because they have, you know, good wines. They're limited edition, limited editions. You know, there's each vintage. Each vintage of wine is more limited than what you probably can find on other menus because they make smaller quantities of it so it's constantly fluctuating okay. so that's monsieur paul's we love it there it's amazing the atmosphere is wonderful all the waiters speak in a french accent and are super dreamy we've had some fun conversations with the waiters we you know asked them where in france they were from they always to have speak a- french to us well that's why julie asks them because julie loves their accent and they do have a beautiful accent I asked them because I'm legitimately interested. As am I. I know, I'm just being silly. My family's from France, but I don't know the name of the region. For some reason, I should ask my uncle. We have paperwork, but anyways. Um, And so that I can be like, oh, my family is from this region of France. Our family has its own castle, Julie. Like, we can't live there because it's been burned down several times. But when Michael and I go to France and do like the whole French-German tour, we're going to go, going to claim it gonna wear a tiara on the entire tour like this is my castle our family we're nobles but we were sympathetic to the peasants and the other nobles threw us out but hey they threw us out before the french revolution and they all got their heads chopped off we moved to nova scotia where it's very cold for some reason we moved there for some reason not it's very cold for some reason. it's very cold because of where it is located on this planet anyway so monsieur paul's is wonderful and we love it and we want to go all the time. And it's one of those restaurants that we don't mind going to on several occasions because the menu is always changing. So even if you've been once, chances are you're not going to get the same thing the second time you go. Like, they have my soup, but that's pretty much the only thing, that and the orangina, that has been the same. (laughs) The desserts will often be the same ingredients, but they will present them differently or change a couple ingredients up so that it's not quite exactly the same thing. This week's fan favorite food comes from our friend Amanda Fisher, and she is going to tell us about her favorite food memory. She is the girl that went on our trip with us Yes. when Julie was dubbed, when I was dubbed, the human garbage disposal. She was the pregnant one. Yeah, I ate all her food. And mind you, I did not steal her food from her. She willingly gave it to me after she was done eating, and I was not done. So... Amanda says this. Hey, Amy and Julie, here's my favorite story. My name is Amanda Fisher, and I went on a baby moon with my best friend Amy and our friend Julie. That's me. To Disney. While we had a lot of food, lunch at the Beast Castle, and so on, the best experience we had was at Restaurant Marrakesh. Hmm. We talked about that last week. A Moroccan restaurant in Epcot. First off, as you are heading there, you travel down many little pathways, passing many little shops that make you want all the amazing scarves and items, while also making you feel like you're walking among the streets to a secret gem of a location. Once you get there, the doors open to a beautiful colored interior, bright and lively while classic Moroccan. We sat down, and when I, while I can't tell you exactly what we ate, don't worry, we already did. We all had, <laughs> we all, we all had the royal feast. Ate, uh, Amanda, you did too. Uh, we ate so much of it, it was amazing. But not as much as Julie did. They even had 
They had everything from soups to samplers and kebabs to lamb shanks. The flavors and spices were so well done, and I can't say anything other than the dishes were delicious. We definitely shared our plates with Julie. I added that one in there. Sorry. Everybody (laughs) shared them with me. There were belly dancers for entertainment, and the service was great. Though that could have been because Julie was flirting with the waiter. Everybody remembers this from our trip. Everyone. I bet the waiter remembers it, too. I haven't seen him since. The only disappointing thing was that while there was a sign advertising a cookbook, there was no cookbook. Yeah. I remember this. Okay, so before you finish, if you are aware of Restaurant Marrakesh having a cookbook or having had a cookbook. And And if you have a copy of it and you don't want it anymore, please give it to us. Or if you have a copy and you do want it. And you just want to make copies of it for us. We would also love that, too. Yeah, just, like, go to Staples. We'll pay for the scanning. (laughs) Send it to us. We'll pay for that, too. Yes, we will. We really want this cookbook. Everything else considered, it's definitely a place I have to go back to. If only Amy had let me just finish that one sentence of Amanda's story. So thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing your... (coughs) I'm going to die. Thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing your favorite Disney food memory. I'm we, so glad it was with us. It was. It was with. Of course, it was with us. Please, we were <laughs> amazing. We have lots of Disney food memories to share with Amanda too. So I'm glad hers was shared with us as well. So, mm-hmm. if you would like to share your favorite Disney food memory with us and be featured on one of your episodes, nope, on one of our episodes, please send your story to one little spice at gmail dot com. I'll say that slower. One little spice at gmail dot com. Or share your story in the comment section of our pinned Facebook post. You'll see that right at the top. We would love to hear your Disney food memory stories. They can be from Disney World, Disneyland, the Disney Cruise Line. Yes. Aulani in Hawaii, Disneyland Paris, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Adventures Tokyo. with Disney. Ooh, I forgot about the Adventures with Disney. Yes. Seriously, anything Disney related at all, we want to hear about your food stories. Even if it was just like, oh my god, today I got the most amazing bucket of popcorn. In Disney. Seriously. We want to hear it all. Please share those with us. You can also follow us on social media. On Twitter, we are at one little spice. Instagram, we are at one underscore little underscore spice. And on Facebook, we are one little spice. Make sure you join our one little spice group on Facebook as well to talk about each episode and all things Disney food. There are three questions to answer once you hit join. It's just so we can learn even more about our listeners. If you have any thoughts or comments to add to our upcoming podcasts, please share on social media or email us at onelittlespice at gmail.com. You can join us on Patreon for exclusive access to the Magical Snack Corner, which is our bi-monthly episode about Disney snacks. Right now, we are diving into Disney's Food and Wine Festival in Epcot, and we are talking about in detail all the restaurants, nope, all the booths that they have and all the menus at each of the booths. So we are super excited for you to hear that. You will also get a chance to co-host a Magical Snack Corner with us, a live monthly Google Hangout with us, and much more. And if any of that sounds awesome, please head over to www.patreon.com slash one little spice and choose your support level. By supporting us on Patreon, you are helping us to bring you even more awesome Disney food content more often. When we reach our first goal, we can start creating our website and we can give you even more Disney food information all in one place. We are so close to reaching our goal, guys. We really want to be able to bring this to you. You'll be able to see all our food and hear all of our stories right there, and we'll be able to hear from you as well and even get guest reviews on some of the restaurants that we haven't been to yet. We are on Tee Public. You can search One Little Spice or click the link in the description here. We have t-shirts, mugs, cell phone cases, stickers, anything that you could possibly want we have there. And you can show your One Little Spice pride that way. We are on YouTube now as well. You can search The Taste Lab and find us. This month's Taste Lab is going to be from, well, I guess last month's Taste Lab. Or the most upcoming Taste Lab that we have is going to be from Restaurant Marrakesh. We are doing a... Seven vegetable couscous with a roasted leg of chicken. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be amazing and wonderful, and we are so excited to share that with you. The one following that is going to be the chopped cob salad from Hollywood Brown Derby. So the two upcoming vlogs are going to be amazing. So click subscribe in the top corner to subscribe and be the first to know when those two videos come out. We also have 
our taste lab from Akersh House where we created the vegetable terrine that Amy had on our trip there. I think ours came out better. I'll mm-hmm. let you guys be the deciding factor there. We still have to show pictures of that because the the comparison is just... <laughs> yeah. Ours is better. Um, and then you can check out our first episode ever, which is where we make Lasselier's cheddar cheese soup and match it with some miraculous poutine with four different french fries. We go all out with that one. We're excited to share that with you. And cheese curds. Who doesn't love cheese curds? So make sure you subscribe. And if you decide to make it yourself, please post pictures in the comments and share with us because we want to see all your Disney food magic that you've brought into your kitchen as well. That is all that we have for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. And just remember, every recipe starts with one little spice. Because they only serve dinner. Mm, Chinese food. Sorry, Julie, edit that out. We're not talking about Chinese food. Can I? So, fun for fun side story. I don't know. Can you, Amy? Because can you get the words out? I don't know. The pen is blue. Red. Other way around. I was thinking about that movie and that part the other day. I'm going to say that again because I was really loud and I looked like I was spelled like this and I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to be like, Dear Lord, Julie, I wish you recorded the second one of those because I was talking to you. Welcome to episode 14. <laughs> <laughs> It was like our introduction into Boba Pearls. Paul Bocus. Paul Bocus. Paul Bocus. Boku. Do you remember that drink? Do you remember that drink, Amy? Boku. Do you remember that? Because they only serve. Sorry. Yeah, I've been in that one. I've been in that one. Stop hitting the table. You're not trying very hard. Yeah, you get to see Hanson. Or maybe you already saw Hanson. Yay, Hanson. How were they? With the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, I bet it was amazing. Did you cry the whole time? I bet you did. (coughs) Julie, continue with the regular scheduled podcast part. Love you. Because it's frozen. (coughs) What do we do? Do the same thing that she did. Julie, make sure that goes away because you use the F word every day. Sorry, you don't. Well, you do probably, but it rhymed. I mumble a lot when Julie's doing moderator stuff. I don't actually mind, but usually she interrupts me before I get this far. I feel like <laughs> Jerry, Gary, Larry, Jerry, Jerry Gergish. Because Terry, I just keep he's Terry go- too, and Larry. Terry, I just keep going, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to say something stupid, Julie. Tap, 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 tap. Maui, Maui. So amazing.